risk management applications of swap strategies now let us revise uh, some of the important things we've learned at level 1 and level 2 a swap is essentially an exchange of series of cash flows based on the returns of an underlying asset now except currency swap in most of the swaps we are not required to exchange the notional amounts now every swap or let's say a plain vanilla swap means that there would be one party which would have to pay a fixed rate and there would be other party which would pay floating rate so this swap you can view as a portfolio of two separate bonds so assuming you are in a pair swap meaning of a pair swap is that you are going to pay fixed and you are going to receive floating so if you are going to receive floating you can see this position as having a long position on a floating rate bond and if you are going to pay fixed you can see this position as a short position on a fixed coupon bond so typically what are the cash flows at time zero we pay the market value or the face value and then year one two three four five whatever is the tenure every year there is a coupon and then again the face value is return the same is true here now what will happen is that this long and short position will nullify these cash flows which is the value that you pay at inception and the value that you pay at the end of the tenure of the swap so every year the only cash flow which would be relevant is that fixed rate which is determined in advance and the floating rate which is determined based on the rates which keeps on changing or the reference rate are we fine so at level 2 we understood how to calculate this fixed rate and we call that as pricing of swap so we looked at a formula and that formula was fixed rate on a swap was 1 minus g4 divided by g1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and this g which was a discount factor was calculated as 1 divided by 1 plus whatever was the forecasted rate or whatever was the discount rate for that maturity so let's do an example let us say 90 day LIBOR is 8% 180 day LIBOR is 9% 270 day LIBOR is 10% and 360 day LIBOR I'm intentionally going to keep a really large gap 18% calculate a fixed swap rate All right, let's do it together. Let us calculate the discount factor for 8% rate. Now, since these are LIBOR rates, we know that they do not compound, right? So, which means in your financial calculator, if you keep N, anything apart from 1, you've done a mistake, or raise 2 will always be a 1, isn't it? Since there is no compounding effect. So, 8% per year, so how much for 90 days? That would be 2%. So, 1 divided by 1.02 equal to and let's put that in the first memory slot STO1 so this Z factor would be 1 divided by 1.02 9% for one year for half of the year it would be 4.5% so 1 divided by 1.045 10% for one year so for 270 days it would be 7.5% so it would be 1 divided by 1.0 75 and 18% for one year so this would be 1 divided by 1.18 once you have all the z factors then you would say 1 minus 1 divided by 1.18 which is the g4 divided by 1 divided by 1.02 plus 1 divided by 1.045 plus 1 divided by 1.075 plus 1 divided by 1.18 4.10 okay 1 1 this is the rate for every quarter so this we multiply with 4 and the rate that we get here 16.4 so 16.4 percent is the fixed swap rate and as we know that this rate always has to be closer to the LIBOR of the last maturity which in this case was 18 percent 
is that fine so with this background let us start a look at the first syllabus of level 3